Okay, here's another um, part to the 1.3, finding the max or min of a quadratic lesson. Um, first part of the lesson, I reviewed with you how to find the max or min using a method called completing the square. Um, in this part of the lesson, I will teach you how to find the max or min of a quadratic using the method of partial factoring. Okay, so here's all the steps to partial factoring. If you want, you can read through them right now. Just pause the video and read them. Um, I'll reference them as I go through the examples and explain as I go along. So here's our first example. We have a quadratic y equals x squared plus 2x minus 6. Now, of course, when you have an example like this, you're not going to have a picture of the quadratic right beside it where you could just simply look and pull out the vertex. But for this example, just so you understand what I'm doing, um, having the graphic here will make it easier for me to explain to you um, what's happening. So for partial factoring, um, it's another method to find the vertex. Um, some people would prefer this to completing the square. It's up to you most of the time which method you use. I'm just going to um, show this to you so you have more tools you can use to find the vertex of a quadratic. So here's how we use partial factoring um, <clears throat> to find the vertex. First thing we're going to do is we are going to look at the constant term in the quadratic and set the quadratic equal to that constant term. So I will write negative 6 equals x squared plus 2x minus 6. So I've taken the constant term, set the quadratic equal to that. Now, if I were to solve this quadratic, what I would get would be the x values where the quadratic has a y value of negative 6. So if I go through algebraically and do that, I should get an x value of 0 and negative 2. Those are the two places that the quadratic has a y value of negative 6 at 0 and negative 2. After I've calculated that value of 0 and negative 2, I could use those x values and the fact that I know that quadratics are symmetrical to find the x coordinate of the vertex by finding the average of those two x values. Once I know the x coordinate of the vertex, I could find the y coordinate by plugging in the x coordinate of the vertex into the original equation and solving for y. Now, you might ask, why did we decide to set it equal to negative 6? Well, you'll see it's going to end up working out nicely because when you set the quadratic equal to whatever the y-intercept is, keep in mind the c value of a quadratic in standard form is the y-intercept, you'll always get one of your answers to be 0 because it's right on the y-axis. So we're going to always set it equal to the y-intercept and then solve for what values of x have that y-value. One of the x values will always be 0 because that's one of the properties of a y-intercept. Okay, So let's go ahead and actually do algebraically what I just explained here. So let me erase these. So I've set it equal to the y-intercept. Now I'm going to solve for the two x values that have that y value of negative 6. So step one, I'm going to move this minus 6 to the other side. I'll have negative 6 plus 6 equals x squared plus 2x. So I have 0 equals x squared plus 2x. Now I need to solve this for x. So in order to solve this for x, I have to factor. So I'll common factor the right side. I can take out an x, and I get x plus 2. Now I'm going to use what's called the zero product rule. If I have two factors being multiplied together to equal 0, um, there are two ways this product could be 0. If the first factor was equal to 0, or if the second factor was equal to 0. And then solve each of those equations that I've made. So x equals 0 is done. If x was 0, this product would be 0. 0 times 2 would be 0. Or if x plus 2 is 0, so if x was negative 2, I would have negative 2 times 0, which is 0. So these are the two x values that have a y coordinate of negative 6. So essentially I've found two points on my parabola. I've found the point 0, negative 6, and, <clears throat> sorry, I've found the point, yeah, 0, negative 6, and negative 2, negative 6. Those are the two points I've found. These are the two x-coordinates that have a y-coordinate of negative 6. If we look at the graph, here's a point 0, negative 6. Here's the point negative 2, negative 6. And you'll notice if I want to find the vertex, I'll do the vertex next. To find the vertex, I can find the x-coordinate of the vertex by adding these two x-values and dividing by 2 to find the middle of the two of them, to find the midpoint of these two points. Because you know, based on the definition of a parabola, it's symmetrical, so the vertex is going to be in the middle of those two points. So. Let's find the x-coordinate of the vertex. I'll write x vertex is equal to 
you'll take your two solutions to what we've solved for before, so 0 and negative 2, 0 plus negative 2 over 2. That equals negative 2 over 2, which equals negative 1. If I want to find, I'm just going to show a little division between what I'm doing here. If I want to find the y coordinate of the vertex, all we have to do is take our x, our x coordinate of the vertex and plug it into the original equation for x. So negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 6. That equals 1 minus 2 minus 6. That equals negative 7. So my vertex is at negative 1, negative 7. And since my a value of the original function is positive 1, I know that the parabola opens up since the a value is positive, so this is a minimum point. The vertex is a minimum point in this case. Okay. Let's do, I'll do two more examples of this, and for both of them, or for this one, I'll show you the picture of the quadratic as we go through it. But keep in mind, you're not going to have this picture when you solve problems like this. So let's use partial factoring to find the vertex of this quadratic. So let's set the quadratic equal to the y-intercept of this quadratic. So I know one of the solutions is going to be 0. Um, and then we'll find the other x value that has a y value of 3. Find the average of those x values. That gives the x coordinate in the vertex. Plug that x coordinate into here and get the y coordinate in the vertex. So at first, let's set it equal to 3. And then we will solve the quadratic to figure out the two x values that have a y coordinate of 3. And we know one of them is going to be 0 because the y intercept is at 3. And then we'll figure out the x coordinate of this point and we should get a value of 3. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's solve this quadratic. Uh, move that 3 over, I get 3 minus 3, which is 0. So 0 equals 4x squared minus 12x. Now I can common factor the right side of the equation to solve it. So I can take out a 4x and I get x minus 3. Now I use the zero product rule, set both of my factors to zero and solve for both cases for the two x values that could make the product equal to zero. 4x could be zero or x minus 3 could be zero to make the product zero. And then solve for x in both instances. Zero divided by four is zero. Zero plus three is three x could be 0 or 3. So I found two points. Um, when x is 0, the y coordinate would be 3, and when x is 3, the y coordinate would be 3. So 0, 3, and 0.33 are on the quadratic. 0, 3, and 3, 3. If I want to find the vertex, the vertex is going to be in the middle of those two points because parabolas are symmetrical. So if I want the x coordinate of the vertex, I just have to find the midpoint of the two solutions that I have found. So my two solutions were 0 and 3. The midpoint of 0 and 3 is equal to 3 over 2, or if you want, 1.5. <clears throat> Next thing we're going to do is we're going to find the y-coordinate of the vertex. find the y coordinate of the vertex, all you're going to have to do, using the original equation of the quadratic, plug in the x coordinate of the vertex. So 4 times 3 over 2 squared minus 12 times 3 over 2 plus 3. Sorry, it's being a little, it's lagging a bit here, plus Three. So we can do this calculation. If you want, you're more than welcome to do this all at once on your calculator, or we can do it algebraically to find the y coordinate. So we'd have 4 times 9 over 4. Oh, that cancels nicely. Minus um, 36 over 2, which can give us 18, but I'll write it as 36 over 2 plus 3. 4 times 9 divided by 4. The 4s cancel. I'm just left with 9 minus 18 plus 3. 9 minus 18 is negative 9, plus 3 is negative 6. My vertex is 3 over 2 
or 1.5 if you want to write it, negative 6. And because my a value is positive, that means the parabola opens up, which means the vertex is a minimum point. So I'll just scroll back here, vertex, 1.5, negative 6, and that is a minimum point. There's my final answer. I'll do one more example, and I'll do this one a bit quicker, maybe with less explanation, just the steps. And we won't look at the graph this time. So <clears throat> for this one, uh, what we're going to do, find the vertex partial factoring, you're going to set it equal to whatever the y-intercept is. So negative 2 plus negative 3, x squared plus 9x minus 2. And now solve for x, find the two x values that have a y-coordinate of negative 2. Move this over, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And I'm left with negative 3x squared plus 9x. Factor the right side so that we can solve it. I'll take out a negative 3x, and I'm left with x minus 3. Zero product rule, negative 3x could be 0, or x minus 3 could be 0. 0 divided by negative 3 is 0. 0 plus 3 is 3. To find the x-coordinate of the vertex, I need to add those two solutions and divide by 2 to find the midpoint. So once again, I get 1.5, or 3 over 2, to find the y-coordinate of the vertex. I need to plug in my 3 over 2 in for x into this equation. So negative 3 times 3 over 2 squared. Plus 9 times 3 over 2 minus 2. And then once again, you can solve this all at once, or we can do it algebraically. Negative 3 times 9 over 4 plus 27 over 2 minus 2. We will need to get a common denominator <coughs> of 4. So firstly, I'll multiply this negative 3 in, negative 27 over 4 um, plus 54 over 4 minus Eight over four. Give me four twenty-seven minus eight. So I'll get nineteen over four if I evaluate that. So my vertex is three over two and nineteen over four. And because my a value is negative, that means the parabola opens down, which means this is a max point. And here we go, we can see what it looks like now. <clears throat> 1.5 and then the vertex is at 1.5 and then almost 5, which is what we found to be our vertex here. Opens down, it's a maximum point, and you'll notice the x values um, that we calculated were the x values that have a y value of the y-intercept, so negative 2. So we got 0 and 3. And then the vertex was between those two. That's why we found the midpoint of the two of them. Then plugged that midpoint in for x to get the y value. All right, that's it for partial factoring. Um, so you now have the choice of using either completing the square or partial factoring when you're finding the vertex of a quadratic.